I think one of the challenges that organizations are facing is that sales managers don't have the skills to coach their teams effectively. Welcome to Coach the Sale, the podcast for sales professionals on the path to becoming sales leaders. Each week, we sit down with sales coaches, successful sales leaders, and others at the top of their game to share what they've learned and help you to coach the sale. Hi, and welcome to episode number 11 of Coach the Sale. I'm your host, Matt Heyman. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this episode, I'm trying to answer the question, how do you develop a sales coaching culture and how do you instill in other people a sales coaching mindset? To do that, I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Pete Evans, Managing Director of Ventas Sales. Pete is an experienced sales coach and has worked with sales professionals from startups right the way through to large multinational companies. And he's an authority on teaching people how to get the best from themselves and their teams. In this episode, Pete and I discuss these topics amongst many others. Is sales coaching more than just a trendy buzzword? How do you distinguish between sales coaching and sales management? How can one manage their own mindset? The importance of identifying different learning styles. Pete shares three key ways to develop self-awareness and how to avoid the pitfalls of hearing feedback as criticism. How do you get the most out of your sales pipeline? And what's the best way to conduct a coachability assessment? There's so much more in this episode. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Let's get straight to it. Let's chat with Pete. Pete Evans, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm uh, I'm great, Matt, and thanks so much for uh, inviting us to be uh, part of the uh, the podcast series. Fantastic, great to have you on. Um, today's episode is all about sales coaching culture and mindset. Uh, before we get into some of the detail around that, tell us a little bit more about Ventas and a bit about your background as a sales coach. Yes, yeah, so we um, Ventas works with uh, primarily with owner managed businesses that are looking to uh, grow sales. Our clients range from uh, startups with investors that are looking to hire their first salesperson uh, <clears throat> right up into the global space. Um, our focus is on helping the sales manager become a super coach so they can help drive performance in their sales teams. Um, we we are a UK partner of objective management groups, so we use the um, tools to identify some of the challenges that the companies are facing in growing sales. And one of the key things that we find is that um, <clears throat> sales managers and sales leaders are not spending enough time invested in actually coaching their salespeople. Fantastic. Are you are you working then primarily with people who've been promoted into role or uh, people who've been recruited? What what's the typical background of some some of the people that you're working with day to day? <clears throat> some of the people are um, a new a new into a, a sales management or sales leadership role. Some of them are sort of when I say they're, they're experienced, they've been a sales manager for a number of uh, a number of years, um, so it's a, it's a wide range of experience that that, uh, that we're dealing with. So, as an example, this morning I was with a a sale <coughs> uh, a sales manager new into sales management, leading a team of eight salespeople. Um, the other day I was with somebody who'd been twenty years as a sales manager, so it can it can really vary. Fantastic. So, Pete, you've you've mentioned that you work with organisations of different sizes. From your perspective, why do you think a sales coaching culture is important for nowadays in in today's current businesses? Why not just leave sales reps up to it and a little bit like uh, Animal Farm, let the strongest <laughs> let the, let the weak die off and the strongest rise to the top? Why 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 have a sales coaching culture in the first place? <clears throat> Matt, I think that's a. A great question to to start with. Um, I'm a keen follower of success in sports, and if you look at the best people in sport, whether they're in individual sports like uh, athletics, golf, uh, cycling, although cycling is a team sport as well, and you look to to teams, they all have coaches to help them improve. Um, you know, working on working on skills, working on mindset to help them improve. And I think it's really important. It's not just about helping the the people who are not performing as well as they should be. It's also coaching is also about helping your top performers get even better as well. So I, I think it's really important that the sales coaching culture is done right from the top of the organization and that the, the board of directors or the sales leaders allow their sales managers the time to coach effectively. 
I think one of the challenges that organizations are facing is that sales managers don't have the skills to coach their teams effectively. So I think bringing that sales coaching culture where it's not just a <clears throat> conversation by the, by the photocopy, but the sales manager is investing at least 50% of his time coaching his team on a consistent basis. So let's distinguish then between sales management and sales coaching. Because from, from my perspective, what I see in here, I have a hunch, I think, that sometimes people will often call what they do sales coaching, but largely it's because it's sort of a current buzz term, when in reality, if you look at what they actually do, it's probably more like a traditional sales management role under a different name. From your perspective, where's, where's the difference? What's, how can you distinguish between sales management and sales coaching? Uh, that, that's, an, that's another great question. So from my experience when I um, worked in, co- in a corporate sales environment and would have a, a, a weekly one-to-one with, a se- with my sales manager, um, uh, that was all about going through the figures. So we would just look at the, the, the numbers I was bringing in, the number of sales I was bringing in, the revenue that was generating from my, my employer. And there was no discussion about how we could improve so I think that management is all is all about looking at the the figures, the the direction of travel, um, but it's not it's not focused on improving individual skill sets. Coaching is about helping the individual grow and develop, equipping themselves with new skills. Coaching can take a variety of forms. It can be challenging somebody's pipeline, going through what's in the pipeline. We use an expression about holding the salesperson's feet to the fire. I must emphasize, Matt, that's not literally, but it's, dri- <laughs> but it's, driving, the ac- it's driving the accountability because we find a lot of salespeople and sales managers have bloated pipelines, and so they're misreporting pipelines. But more importantly, it's actually the sales manager accompanying uh, salespeople on calls or listening into listening into calls, recordings of calls and all that stuff, a lot of the work that Refract do with their clients. So, so actually the salesperson can understand what best practice is. And also coaching can involve things like role-playing, prospective calls or prospective meetings. So one of the things I was doing this morning with a client is we, we were role-playing a one-to-ones with his team. So pr- coaching is about getting the salespeople to practice as well. Management is about focusing on maybe some of the historical things that have happened in terms of performance. Coaching is about helping your salespeople improve and get to the next level of performance and breaking through those barriers. And lastly, coaching is also about is about helping salespeople deal with some of the mindset issues we see with a lot of salespeople and sales managers as well. Yeah, we're going to come on to mindset, I think, later on in the call. Before we do, what are some of the first steps to developing that sales coaching culture? If somebody's starting from a standing start, how can they get moving towards developing that type of culture within their organization? There are many aspects to obviously developing that sales culture in an organization, Matt. But a sort of a clear starting point for actually getting started is rather than actually rushing in, you've got to get the sales manager has got to get their team engaged with the process. And one way of getting their team engaged with the process is maybe to run a, a, a mini workshop or as part of a sales team meeting and just identify some of the barriers to success, some of the things that could be getting in the way of their success. It, it could be the way they feel about the economy. We're all talking about the impact of, of Brexit. Apologies for mentioning the B word, Matt. Um, <laughs> You know, it it could be to do with marketing. It could be to do with price. But let's just get all those things, you know, written down, the things that are getting in the way. But as we know from being a partner of Objective Management Group, 80% of success in sales is down to, to mindset. And one of the things we see time and again with salespeople and sales managers is excuse making or lack of responsibility for their own choices. So when you can get, you can create a culture where, salespeople feel comfortable asking for help. That's a key thing where they feel that they can receive candid feedback. You've got to create that culture where feedback is a two-way process where the sales manager can give a salesperson feedback and the salesperson give their sales manager feedback about their performance because although sales is an individual role, 
you are all part of a team and, and can help each other. So I think that that's a really good starting point if your budget is limited. If you've got more budget, you could take an exercise in evaluating the skills and competences of your sales team. Because again, one thing that you need to know is, are your salespeople coachable? You know, you've got to break down the resistance to coaching. And also, I think some people's experience of coaching isn't coaching, it's more being told what they need to do. <laughs> yeah. It's more directive. And if I may share a, sto- a story with you from my corporate sales background, I had a sales manager who said to me, Pete, if you did two more sales a week, imagine how much bigger your bonus would be. So I had no idea what really motivated me. So I, I think it's important that up front, a sales manager or sales leader invest time in really understanding what motivates each individual in that team because you can't coach everybody the same way and you can have a framework but you need to adapt that framework to each individual and I think like anything in sales the sales manager has to sell in both what the outcomes of the coaching are going to be and they've got to they've got to commit to doing it consistently and this is one of the things that we find when we're working with clients is that sales managers will cancel coaching sessions <clears throat> with their sales team because they'll say, oh, something important came up. Well, I, well, actually, coaching should be the most important thing that a sales manager does during the course of the week. But, but often you'll hear, well, a big opportunity came up and I've also got my own, um, my own targets to meet. And coming back to creating the culture, it's down to the organization to create help create that culture and not have sales managers having an individual target because then you get a conflict of interests. So then I'm interested in particular around this idea of, of the coach, the sales manager as the sales coach. How important from your perspective is the mindset of the individual coach and in particular the flexibility? Because I see it as somebody may be leading a team and within that team, they will have people with different motivations, different learning styles, different aspirations, how important is behavioral flexibility as a sales coach? And because I know you're probably going to say it's very important, what are some, <laughs> what are some of the things that they can do to, to maybe self-reflect or improve on that flexibility? I would say that it's more than uh, very important. I think, I think it's essential that you understand, uh, you understand different learning styles. You, know, you understand that some people learn you know, visual learners, some people are auditory, some people like to, to read things, some people like to participate. So I think you've got to, you've got to be flexible. Some people, I think as my coach sometimes says, you know, you can give them a kick and they'll respond to a good, uh, a good kicking, not a physical kicking, obviously. <laughs> uh, some people you need to put their arm around them and perhaps, you know, give them a bit of a, a bit of a hug and tell them that it's going to be okay. So you've got to understand how you can use those different motivational styles. Coaching is about working with the the individual to get them to work out some of their own solutions. Some of it's about giving, you know, giving feedback as well. So I think being a great coach, I think you've got to be constantly reflecting on your own performance and what, you know, what has worked well and evaluate your own performance because then you create that culture and also that mindset with your team where they will want to learn because they realize that you're open to feedback as well. And, and I think that's, that, that, that's essential. The coach has to reflect on their own performance when a coaching session hasn't gone as well with one of their team. And do you have any suggestions as to how they can do that? Ideas, tips, frameworks that they can start to use? You know, having listened to this on the commute into work, they're motivated to try and reflect on their own practice. Is there anything that you can suggest that they do in order to develop that self-awareness? Yeah, I, I think there's, I think there's three key things you can do, and you know, I think if people are motivated to to want to do um, <clears throat> something about it, I think when you're doing coaching sessions, it's really important at the at the end of a coaching session, and and this is a technique that I, I, <clears throat> I've learned. Uh, from some from somebody else, but we, we use, now use a technique called win, learn, change. So ask the person you're coaching, what is their big win from today's coaching session? So um, <clears throat> the second thing is, what's their biggest learning point um, or takeaway from today's coaching session? 
And the third, the third thing is what is the co- what is the coachee, the person you're coaching, going to change in the next seven days? And get the person you're coaching to write those things down and then send you an email following the coaching session. But also take the opportunity for the person you're coaching to give you some feedback as well. Just say, what, what's the one thing that I could change in the next coaching session with you? You know, what could I do differently to improve these sessions? So, so as a coach, constantly be asking for feedback and, and write that down. That's a, a really great framework to add some value to each of your coaching sessions. I think when you've been doing coaching, often the temptation is, okay, well, I'll start my first coaching session at nine, the next one's at 10, and you don't take a break. Build in a 10-minute break between each coaching session so that you've got time to reflect. Um, record coaching sessions as well with people. And then if you've got somebody coaching you, ask somebody else to listen in to your coaching sessions. So as part of what we do, we record in our team, we record coaching sessions and we're listening to each other so we can give each other feedback on what's working well, where we can improve. So, so be, you know, <clears throat> being that being that framework of, of, of asking feedback. The third <clears throat> tip I would give, we talk a lot about not only developing a coaching culture, but developing a learning culture. So if you're coaching your people and you want them to improve and you want to empower them, encourage them to read their own sales, read their own mindset. So the, the last tip I would give is, lead by example and start reading more about sales and what is current in sales and sales coaching best practice. And then, and then that encourage your people to see. So one thing we do is we, on our website, we publish, um, we publish what we're currently reading as a team in terms of sales. So there's loads of great content out there. Also, you know, videos on YouTube and other stuff that you can, you can keep up to date in what's current in terms of sales and sales coaching. Yeah, some really great tips there. And, and I'll put some uh, other tips and ideas in the show notes. I think audiobooks is certainly something I'm a huge consumer of audiobooks on platforms like Audible and Blinkvist. And yeah, I think they're a really great resource as well, especially if you're not a keen reader in, in the traditional sense. I think audi- audiobooks are a really great way to do that. So I'll, um, yeah, send, send me some of your top suggestions after the call and we'll, we'll add those into the show notes. That would be, that would be fantastic. Yeah. And uh, another thing which is, <clears throat> which is free, um, you know, li- listening, listening to other podcasts, um, you know, reaching out to other sales specialists and ask their opinion. And on LinkedIn, for example, there's, you know, there's great resource people are posting discussions, so discussions about sales, sales coaching. I know, you know, one of your team, Richard Smith, is very active on showing discussions, get, you know, get involved in discussions and reach out to these people. So I've got a question. If we circle back just a little bit around the coach themselves, my my hunch, my inclination is that if somebody were fairly new to coaching and they coached a member of the team and the team member gave them feedback, some people would take that quite personally and maybe not necessarily in a positive way, particularly if that sales coach has been a top performer for very for a very long time, feels that they know a lot about sales and probably rightly so. But how do you work with a coach who hears that feedback, in some cases for the first time, and, and takes it personally? And is almost sort of challenging it because, you know, who is this person to tell me what to do? You know, I know what I'm doing. I've proven myself. How do you, how do you manage that, that sort of resistance to getting feedback from somebody less senior than you? Another, another great question, Matt. And I think, I think feedback as a human being, you know, outside of the, the sales arena, is one of the most difficult things to, to receive as a as a human being you know we don't like receiving i'll use the word criticism lightly but often feedback can you know can be perceived as as criticism i think it's really important that whoever is giving you feedback um frames it because actually i i view feedback as a gift if somebody has taken the time to give me some feedback it's important <clears throat> that i listen to that feedback as long as it's given it's given context and, you know, somebody is able to back it up with evidence. I think that's the key thing. Um, and I think even if at first you don't agree with the feedback, I think it's important just to just to reflect on the feedback and think, okay, 
if Matt, for example, has given me some feedback about my performance or the way that I handled a, a particular call with a prospect or a meeting, it's because he cares. And what I'm going to do is take the time to reflect on it. And if I can go and improve one thing in my next meeting, <clears throat> I'm going to get a much better response from that prospect. And I think another important point is we we meet lots of salespeople who've been in sales for a long time and think they know everything there is to know about sales. When we say, okay, what's the, what's the potential amount of business you could generate in your territory? And they then explain that they've probably got a quarter or half percent of the potential revenue in that territory. You can then challenge back and say, so do you, do you really know everything about sales? Then? Because if you did, surely you'd be getting a lot more than quarter, half or one percent of the total revenue potential of that territory you've got. So I think it's about how you, um, you know, how you frame it as well. Does that, does that, does that answer your question? It, yeah, it definitely does. I think sometimes, I think you're right. It, sometimes our, our pre, I think sometimes we hear the feedback as criticism when it's, when it should be heard as feedback. And sometimes if it is criticism, we take that quite personally. And I think it's, it's separating out what, what's being said as it's, it's, it's a discussion about the content of the coaching and not about you as an individual. And I think that's a nice distinction to make is that it's, it's, it's just about the coaching that's been delivered. Um, and also that the person to giving that feedback may or may not be right. They may not be correct, but for the greater good, work with it, roll with it. And rather than try and try and conflict against it. Yeah. And, and I think if I, if, if I link this back to earlier on, when you were talking about creating a, a sales culture, part of that sales culture is creating that framework and that culture where people are open and they can candidly give each other feedback about about performance i think one of the challenges and you know you you guys will see this a, a refract as well is that we don't have that consistent culture in organizations of giving candid feedback and often reviewing performance you know it doesn't happen consistently so coaching is about being able to give people consistent feedback about the things they're doing and need to improve getting the individual to work out solutions but if you go, you know, if you look at team sports, and I, I'm, I'm a big follower of, of rugby league, you know, sports teams analyze performance. So, you know, if a rugby league team plays on a, um, a Sunday, then on Monday they will be in video analysis and the teams are giving each other feedback about performance and where things didn't go well, you know, that when they dropped the ball, when that pass didn't go through. We're, we're not as brutal in analyzing sales performance yet but if we were how much better would performance be so there's a lot i think that you know sales managers can learn from from sports and uh, and out you know coaching in sports is about analyzing performance and i know the british cycling talk team talks about you know the aggregation of marginal gains is helping people get better and it's often the small things that lead on to bigger performance one of the things that you mentioned at the top of the show, Pete, was the idea of coachability and the way that you guys can support organizations to assess whether or not a potential candidate is coachable or the extent to which they're coachable. Can you give us some tips or some thoughts around ways in which listeners can start to identify highly coachable prospects in terms of uh, recruits or, yeah, other, other ideas around how can somebody identify somebody who is a, a strong contender for someone who's coachable versus somebody who is some red flags or warning signs that perhaps they're, they're not going to be particularly coachable moving forward. Okay. Well, uh, there's, there's, there, there, are, there are two ways that you can obviously assess this. One is through using um, an evaluation tool like the objective management group tools. So if, you, if you've got a, an assessment tool as part of your process, that may or may not tell you whether they're they're coachable if if that's one of the competences that it's measuring. Alternatively, if you if you've not gone down the route of having an, an assessment tool, what you could do is you can put some questions into your question bank as part of the selection process. So typically, as you know, if we're working with a a client, we put a question bank together. So there might be some some questions along. You know, um, tell me about the relationship you have with your current sales manager or your current sales leader. T tell me what um, 
tell me what great looks like in terms of that relationship. How often do you have a one-to-one with your current sales manager? What things do you go through with them? What do you like about the one-to-ones that you have? What do, you know? What don't you like? So again, you're beginning to get a lot of a, a lot of the feel. And if you're getting responses like, "Well, I think one-to-ones are a waste of time; they don't add any value," you're beginning to build up a bit of a picture because actually, the salesperson you're interviewing may be telling you they don't believe in structure, they don't believe in self-improvement. Another great question to ask is. Um, Tell me what was the la- tell me what was the last book you read about improving yourself? And, uh, and I've heard some really uh, strange answers. Like I know everything there is to know about sales. Why would I read anything? <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm already I'm already a great salesperson. <laughs> <laughs> we need that person on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we, yeah, we've got we've, we've got a whole history of them. Um, so you. you you can build it. You can build in some simple questions to to ask them. How much time do you invest in developing yourself? Do you guys do anything in terms of the recruitment process? I know here at Refract, what we do, especially in the latter stages when we're looking to take on board uh, a new a new recruit, is one of the things we we sometimes do when we're looking to take on a new hire is that we will give them a a role play of sorts, but get them to identify and analyze a part of a conversation provide some coaching on that element of the conversation and then invite them to replay that role play again and see if that learning has been adapted and integrated in what they do. Do you do any sort of practical exercises or encourage any of the the guys who are recruiting to, to do anything like that within the recruitment process itself? No, not as not as exact as that, but when you know we are working with the clients who were high, who were who were hiring, if there's a second if there's a, a second stage so the clients got down to a the the final selection process will encourage them to do some role play in that so we can identify some of these things in terms of you know the individual's coachability so that is something that we would recommend to clients so pete we've talked a lot about sales coaching culture but almost in its sort of infancy or some of the pitfalls and hurdles of the person who's trying to get a culture up and running starting to foster that culture within their team what about the person who's been doing it for some time already looking to improve looking to refine any thoughts or ideas or suggestions on how somebody could level up that process yeah certainly because i think once somebody's got into that stage of whether they're an effective sales coach they've perhaps been coaching consistently for 18 months to, to two years and they want to really raise the bar I think one of the best things that that coach can do is to get an external coach to help them to help keep them accountable to help challenge what they're doing with the sales team because when you are coaching people your sales people on a consistent basis and I think as you know from the your own team it can become challenging it can become quite mentally and emotional draining. So having somebody external to coach you, to help you deal with your challenges, <clears throat> can really help you go up, go up a notch. It could be somebody in it could be somebody in your sales leadership team that can coach you consistently, get better at coaching, but that's a discussion for another another interview about the, the quality of sales leadership and the impact on sales managers. So if you're a sales manager wanting to become a super, super sales coach, my first recommendation would be to engage with an external coach to coach you to better performance yourself, which you can then cascade that skills and knowledge down to uh, yourself. If budget's a, a challenge, maybe you could you could engage in some, you know, be part of a group, um, become part of a, a mastermind group. If, if, if budget's um, a bit of a restraint for you, there's a lot, again, a bit like we suggested before with mindset, there's lots of online learning that you can do as well, you know, or you can get it, you could even go down the route of getting, you know, getting a certified coach as well. You know, there's different accreditations just in pure of developing your own coaching skills specifically away from just, just sales coaching. Yeah. What, what are some of the challenges that you experience when you're working with somebody who is experienced um, but but wants to improve. Are there any patterns that you observe over time amongst the coaches that have been doing it a while but become a little bit maybe stagnant or used to doing things the way they've always done? Are there any common themes amongst those people? Yeah, I, I think it comes back to something that you know we discussed earlier on in the in the podcast in that they've got they've got set in their ways. So they've 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 got a way of doing things which is 
comfortable to them so it isn't pushing them as a coach or a sales manager outside their comfort zone. And once the people they're coaching see through that, they're not driving that the levels of performance with their sales team. So you get people in their comfort zone. The only thing that grows in the comfort zone are weeds. <laughs> <laughs> so what you need to do is it, it's encouraging those sales managers who are doing a competent job to, to recognize that if they don't change – the competition down the road may be investing in developing their salespeople and the, the salespeople the competition are getting better. So, you know, you begin to lose market share as well. So, so it's, again, it's giving context. There's more experienced sales uh, managers. Now, here's a stat, if I may, I'd like to share with you um, about, you know, experienced sales managers. Into And this has come from, the data that Objective Management Group have done over the last 30 years, um, the coaching competency of a sales manager with less than five years sales management experience is only 1% less than a um, sales manager who's got more than um, five, who's, sorry, he's actually 11% higher than a veteran sales manager. So new sales managers tend to have a higher coaching competency than a sales manager with more than 25 years experience. Wow. Yeah, I've seen some of that data as well from IMG Group and it, it blows my mind. It's sort of, yeah, it's a little bit counterintuitive. You'd expect the expertise to increase at a fairly steady rate uh, through the years, but but the data that they're showing seems seems not to. What do you put that down to? Do you think people get complacent as they get a certain degree of, uh, results and then there's there's not necessarily that push to the next summit. They're, they're quite happy on the trajectory that they're on. Um, I, I think part of that is complacency. I, I think that part of it is that you know people are constantly wanting people who've worked in their sector to come and come and join them. So you get it's down to it's down to the leadership of the uh, the organisation. Um, it could be that the younger or less experienced sales managers are getting more effective training and coaching and long serving sales managers are just resting on the, um, on the laurels, you know, or it could be that the training and coaching that the organization is receiving is um, not getting effective training or no training. Or potentially that the, that the reps that are being coached identify more closely with somebody closer in age and experience to them. And therefore they're more receptive to the input and the coaching that they get from someone who in, in inverted commas is more like them. Yeah, it could be. I, I think what this boils down to really is if the sales manager has got the right mindset and there's a key word here, growth minded, the sales manager is growth minded. He's going to have more of an impact on his salespeople because he will be receptive to coaching development and, and training and he, he he will he will lead by example and not be going out into the office saying i know it all you know what can this external coach tell me about coaching my salespeople? yeah so we're just just running up on time pete i've got one more question sure. circling back a little bit towards what we talked about earlier how do you think sales leaders should deal with resistance among a team to adopting or improving a sales coaching culture Oh, that's a great uh, final question. You've saved the best one. For, <laughs> you've saved the best one for last. Um, so, in in terms of resistance, we we do see um, we do see pushback from <clears throat> from sales team from salespeople and and sales managers when the leadership team is wanting to drive through uh, change. Often, we get pushback. Well, you know, <clears throat> the, the the figures I'm bringing in are, are good. I've been with this company for five, 10, 15, you know, 15 years. All my customers um, love me. That's because there are two types of indicators in sales. One, are, one is lagging indicators, and a lagging indicators are the financials. So if I brought in, say, two, three million pounds of the business last year, that's, that's historical. That's what my accountant's interested in. But that's not last year's performance isn't a predictor of future success. So the indicators which the leadership team and the sales managers should be focusing on from a coaching perspective are the leading indicators. So the leading indicators are 
the KPIs, the number of calls you need to be making, the number of meetings you need to be having, the number of discovery meetings, the number of presentations. So the, it's about changing that culture because my three million pounds of the business in 2018 could have come from two clients and I could have dropped lucky. Whereas, you know, Matt, the salesperson, might have done a million, but you might have done that consistently and be doing the right thing. So we talk about change the culture so your salespeople are focusing on the right indicators which predict future performance. And uh, and also the, 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 the last point is that salespeople are not used to having the pipeline challenged. And where you get a real change in culture is where the sales manager is challenging consistently what's in the pipeline so you don't get you don't get bloated pipeline so i know for example how many how many marketing qualified leads i need at the start of my sales process and how you know what's the lead time between getting a lead at the start of the sales funnel to actually closing it and analyzing those metrics and being really rigorous and robust about it yeah, good advice. I want to. I want to circle back though to the resistance. What, what about in a team though who are, you know, they, they, they're checking the KPIs. They, they, you know, maybe they've got a good performer, but but the person just doesn't seem to buy into sales coaching. Maybe they're a little bit absent mentally, maybe even physically, not not there, not turning up. How how do you, as a sales manager, you're passionate about coaching, you know it has value, but you're working with somebody who may be a middle of middling performer, maybe even a good performer but they're just not into the sales coaching. What, what can they do? So we're, we're, we're talking about here about your sales manager who's probably got a, an average performer and the average performer isn't, you know, isn't, in, isn't into the coaching. I, I think here from, you know, from experience, our own experience and also working uh, with, with clients, it's about the sales manager encouraging and, and selling in the positive benefits of coaching. And again, encouraging people to, you know, that, that person to get outside their comfort zone because sometimes you find the average performer is actually working really hard, but they're not being as effective. So it's not about getting the salesperson to work any harder. It's getting the salesperson to be more effective with their time. And when you become more effective, you get outstand, you begin to get outstanding results. And from your perspective, where does where does listening to calls come into this? Is that something that you think is is vital? Can it be done? Can coaching be done without it? How much of an impact is listening to to the calls or the conversations, I should say, amongst amongst reps and prospects? I, I think where, where, where reps are making calls, I think listening into calls is absolutely, absolutely essential. And the ability of the sales manager to give feedback about, you know, about those calls, you know, almost as it's happening, I think is is important. I know, obviously, you know, with the refract system, that he, that enhances what a sales sales manager can do with his team because he doesn't have to listen into um, every call. So I think that's <clears throat> I think that's really important as well. Brilliant. So thank you very much for your time, Pete. I really enjoyed this conversation. We've covered a lot of areas. Give us a sense of what people can do to find out more about Ventas and the work that you guys are doing over there. Um, yeah, give us give us some uh, pointers and places where people can go to find out more about you. Um, so, if people want to uh, um, <clears throat> want to see a bit more about the work that we do, they can go to our website, which is www.ventas-sales.com. Um, if people want to connect with me on uh, on LinkedIn, um, then you can find me by uh, Pete Evans and typing in Ventas be able to connect with Elias to receive the um, connection if they want to know a bit more about the work we do with the um, objective management group uh, tool we can let them have a uh, complimentary assessment superb can't say fairer than that love it if we could want to put a we want to put a link in at the end of the call or on the on the show notes we can do that for you we will absolutely do that pete i've really enjoyed this conversation thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll speak again soon Thanks for listening to another episode of Coach the Sale. For show notes, sales coaching resources, and more, visit refract.ai slash coach.